You are listening to Bhagavad Gita for All, a practical guide for everyday life. A lecture series by Nala Narula. Chapter 9, Most Confidential King of Knowledge. So last time we had completed text number 6 of the chapter 9 of the Bhagavad Gita. And this is the midpoint of the Bhagavad Gita, the ninth chapter out of 18. And this is the most confidential royal knowledge. And just for the continuity, we are talking about how Krishna is speaking to Arjuna and telling him that knowing this science, knowing this, having this knowledge, you will be free from misery, from old age and death which is a constant in the material universe. And in the sixth text he is saying that he, before that he has said that everything comes from me, the whole of creation emanates from me and I am not affected by what is happening to them. And in the sixth text he is he is saying, I will just read out the Sanskrit, Nacha matsthani bhutani pashyame yogam aishwaram Bhuta brihan nacha bhuta stho mamatma bhuta bhavana. Everything that is created does not rest in me. That is my mystic opulence. Although I am the maintainer of all living entities and while I am everywhere, myself is the source of creation. That is text number five. And text number six is Yatha Aksha Stito Nityam Vayu Sarvatra Gobahan Tatha Sarvani Bhutani Matsthanite Upadharya. So the example is given that just as the wind is situated in space and it blows everywhere, the mighty wind that stays in space and blows everywhere. Everything rests in me, but I am not affected by any of that. So it is a simple way to understand it is that while there are two uh, two different things, space and air and wind, they do not pick up the attributes of each other. They do not pick up the qualities of each other. So in the similar way, while everything is emanating from Krishna, it is not affecting him. It is not, uh, there is no feedback loop going back to him. So in one sense, he is like the space and the wind is the living entities who are throughout the universe. But they do not, the space does not pick up the attribute of the wind and the wind does not have the attribute of the space. But it is moving within that area. So the living entity is also moving within the material creation and Krishna is not suffering or enjoying the way that the living entities are. So we have text 7 now of the ninth chapter. Sarva Bhutani Kaunteya Prakritim Yanti Mamikam Kalpakshaya Punastani Kalpadau Vishrijami Aham Sarva Bhutani, all the living entities, the created entities, Kanteya, son of Kunti, who is my aunt and my dear cousin brother, Arjun. At the end, the, all, the, all the created entities in the universe enter into me, Yanti enter, Mamikam, unto me, Kalpakshaya, at the end of the millennium, which is four billion three hundred million years so that is the one day of Brahma and Brahma lives hundred years and at the end of that millennium of four billion three hundred million multiplied by three hundred and sixty days multiplied by hundred years the lifetime of Brahma and the night is of the same duration so it's a highly inconceivable amount of time we can't really comprehend is the end of every millennium every material manifestation all the creation of the universe is drawn back into me 
and at the beginning of another millennium by my mystic potency visrjami i create visrjami aham i create again so we learn from the bhagavatam that the way this happens is that mahavishnu lies in the garbhodaksha ocean in a state of meditation and as he is breathing in and out the universes are going in and out of his pores of his skin and as he breathes out the universes are formed and garbhodaksha vishnu enters as the soul of each universe and then he expands into kshirodaksha vishnu who is the paramatma in every living entity so this is a triple expansion that comes and the paramatma is going into all the living entities because without that molecular presence of the divine nothing will get energized nothing will come to any fruition of any kind there will be no potency so he is in every the center of every atom uh, in the universe and while he is one he thus expands himself into many so he has unlimited potencies and this is how the material universe comes up again in text 8 he goes on to say prakritim swam avasthabhya visrjami puna puna bhut gramam imam kritsnam avasham prakritir vasat prakritim is the whole of material creation the whole of material nature swam avasthabhya visrjami the whole of material nature i enter into what comes from me and i create this puna puna again and again the cycle of creation and dissolution is going on bhut gramam all these cosmic manifestations all these living entities uh, imam kritsnam avasham prakrite vasat so these happen automatically avasham definitely prakrite by the force of nature vasat under the control of he has earlier said that his differentiated superior material nature creates this universe which is the three modes of material nature sattva gun rajogun and tamas and the living entity is under the illusion and delusion that he is that body or he is that controller and he is unaware of his actual position so it is also said in bhagavatam that how the lord does this at the end of each millennium all the material elements and the time factor it and there is a place below the below the spiritual world called the mahat and then the mahat tattva the five elements and time live there in a dormant state and then with his glance when he looks he impregnates the entire uh, living entities into that and then from there the creation starts text number 9 nacha mam tani karmani nibadhananti dhananjaya udasina vadashinam asaktam teshu karmasu nacha mam tani karmani never also mean tani dos karmani activities nibadhananti to do not bind me dhananjaya conqueror of riches arjun udasinavat asinam udasinavat asinam situated as though neutral uh, unaffected asaktam without any attraction tesu in them karmasu i am uninterested i am a neutral party none of this work dharanje binds me it cannot bind me i am always detached always situated as though neutral so while the the supreme divine's aspect as parmatma may be sitting in a humanoid creature or in an animal or in a plant or a bacterium or anything like that he is unaffected 
so this again just as a side note when people are thinking that i am serving the divine by serving the poor daridra narayan seva see i am unaffected by that whether the person is daridra or not it doesn't affect me anything done for that it doesn't come to me so there has to be a different methodology so it is a very demonic thinking actually that the divine has suddenly become poor or he is suddenly constrained or he is now in this animal body so that is the divine has degraded to that extent so this is actually demonic thinking he is unaffected by duality he is on an absolute platform he is a well wisher and compassionate to all living entities but he is highly detached from the actions and from what the entities do he is not affected by their action he has no karma he is not bound by karmic consequences by what that entity does or what he himself does in 10 he goes on to explain further maya dhyakshena prakriti suyate sa characharam हेतुनानेन कौंतया जगत विपरिवर्तते मया अध्यक्षेन अंडर माय डायरेक्शन अध्यक्ष डायरेक्शन डायरेक्टर प्रकृति मटेरियल नेचर सूयते मैनिफेस्ट स चराचरम विद मूविंग एंड अनमूविंग हेतुना लिविंग एंटिटीज फॉर दिस रीजन अनेन कौंतया जगत Vipari Vartate. Vipari Vartate is working. Jagat means the cosmic manifestation, the universe. So under my super, superintendence or under my direction, under my direction, material nature manifests these living entities who are moving and unmoving, and the whole annihilation creation cycle is going on automatically under my direction. टेक्स्ट इलेवन अब जानती माम मूढ़ा मनुष्य तनो माश्रितम परम भावम अजानंतो मम भूत महेश्वरम अब जानती माम मूढ़ा फूलिश पीपल दे डू नॉट नो मी मनुष्य तनो आश्रितम थिंकिंग दैट आई हैव कम इन अ ह्यूमन फॉर्म लाइक देयर्स एंड इट हैज द सेम क्वालिटीज एंड द सेम एट्रीब्यूट्स एज देयर्स so they are thinking i'm humanoid just like them but they do not know my transcendental nature param bhavam ajanata they do not know ajanata do not know param bhava my superior supreme transcendental nature mam bhuta maheshwaram and that i am the master of all that exists i am the supreme proprietor maheshwaram means the greatest proprietor or the owner and i have control over everything that exists so these are foolish people who are thinking that just because i have taken a form that looks like theirs the qualities are also the same so this is ignorance of a very great order people do not understand my position they do not understand that they are actually dependent on me and i have nothing to do with that i am the creator and the maintainer of the universe eventually the whole material manifestation is taking place under my direction and there is no contradiction in my appearing in a form that is looking like a human being but i am not an ordinary human being text number 12 moghasha moghe karmano moghe gyan vichetsa rakshasim asurim chaiva prakritim mohinim shrita moghasha moghe karmano moghasha means frustrated desire asha and mog mog asha frustrated confused baffled at every step mog karmana 
Moga Karmana is a person who is again frustrated in material activities. Moga Jnana, frustrated in knowledge. Vichetasa, bewildered, confused. Rakshasim, Asurim, demonic, atheistic, chaiva prakritim, nature. Mohinim, bewildering, Shrita, they take shelter of all the bewildering confusion that is available in nature, the illusory nature. The Prakritim is referring to the three material modes of nature. And he is saying those who are bewildered, they are taking shelter of this atheistic and demonic view. And in that confused, deluded, illusioned condition, all that they are doing, their hopes for liberation, their hopes for fruitive activities and all culture of knowledge is all completely defeated because that is not leading them to any point of resolution. So there is some detailing of this. Very often people are thinking, they have some knowledge and that knowledge will help them. They have some material opulence and they are thinking that that is going to get them ahead. And then they have some hope that it will get them ahead. And it is all going to be frustrated because they have taken shelter of this atheistic and demonic nature. So demonic can also be a person will believe that there is some supreme God form and that they will merge into that at the end of their life. Brahm lean ho jana. So that is demonic thinking because it is actually spiritual suicide. And you cannot merge into the divine and become God. It is not possible. Krishna has said that these are my separated living entities. Vibhinansha. I am one but I have made expanded myself into many means two things. One is the living entity, the separated soul particle, and then the Paramatma, which is the unseparated particle of himself, which is there accompanying every living soul. In text 13, Mahatmanas tu maam partha devim prakriti mashrita bhajante ananya manaso gyantva bhutadim avyayam this is a very wonderful shlok because it gives the other side of the story. Mahatmana, the great souls who are not under illusion have taken shelter of me. And thus they are under the protection of the divine nature. And they are fully engaged without the deviation of the mind. Bhajanti Ananya Manasa, they render service to me. Ananya Manasa, without a, you can say, fragmented mind. They're focused, they're absolutely one pointed. Ananya means without having many different aspects. Manasa, without having many different thought processes. I will worship the demigods also, I shall worship the nature also, I shall worship this one. Just to be on the safe side, let me also do this. That is deviated. That is separated, that is fragmented. But those who are not like that, who are single-minded, single-pointed, Gyatva, they know this, Bhuta Adim Avyayam, they know me as the supreme personality of Godhead, who is the source the original, the oldest being, the oldest person, inexhaustible, avyayam, can never be diminished or depleted. So again, if we refer to Lord Brahma's prayers, Govinda Madhi Purusham Tam Aham Bajami. So Govinda is the original person, Govinda, Krishna. And he is the original, Adi means the oldest, original source. Purusham, maintainer, the source of all sources. Tamaham Bhajami, to you I render service. Bhajami actually means to serve. So this has been clarified number of times. What is the meaning of Bhajan? 
what is the meaning of bhajami is that you serve the divine engaged in that devotional service so the daivim prakritim the superior spiritual nature takes care of the living entities the inferior nature aspect maya takes care of the illusioned entities so there is a difference the spiritual aspect of yog from where yog maya appears the material world is confused because of being in illusion and those who are not in illusion because they are not deluded they are under the protection directly of the divine nature which is the universal life force energy the brahmanical energy of reiki and other such energies that are available in the universe they have taken shelter of that and they render service to me in devotion so if you are devoted to serving the divine's purpose knowing that you have his energies available to you to help liberate yourself then you are not frustrated in your search for liberation so in the previous shlok krishna has said moghasa mogh karmano mogh gyana so those who have frustrated hope moghasa if you are connected to the healing energies of reiki and the kq force which is the direct divine spiritual energies having taken shelter of those so there is no moghasa there is no hopelessness and there is no mogh karmano there is no frustrated fruitive action because with the healing energies you are channeling those energies to get the results but without the binding consequence karma so that is the second point and then the third point mogh gyana they are confused in knowledge they are frustrated so as a healer as you listen to bhagavad gita as you get the advanced knowledge uh, you begin to understand that there is no confusion and you are not going to be frustrated because all the things that you were taught at a beginning stage of getting connected to the healing energies of reiki and the kq force the full expansion is absolutely in line with what you were taught earlier about the nature and quality of the energy and what you can do with it and what it can do for you and this is additional advancement in understanding and knowledge so you will not be baffled or bewildered no vichetasa only those who are atheistic and uh, demonic they are going to be frustrated so as healers we are not to be frustrated and we have to understand this very often we find people saying you know i channeled healing for this and that it didn't work out and very bad not so good that is not an advanced knowledge there are many reasons it, uh, that things don't work out first of all the divine is not your servant it is not your order supplier i write a requisition put a chit and say give this to me and khulja sim sim everything is happening i rub a magic lamp and it's happening not really no you will get what is required you will get more than what you are deserving that's for sure as you would have found out during the course of your healing life that you are actually receiving so much more than you can never even imagine never even think of and never even estimate how i actually got this and then you fall into some kind of illusion or delusion thinking you know i deserve more and you're not prepared to work for it you're not prepared to do what is needed then it is a problem so it is important always to remain connected and it is also very important to remain connected to the community sadhu sangha that is what keeps you safe because when you are connecting to other healers and you are enlivening each other with these topics of discussion or you are in the same zone then you are getting more feedback that enthuses you and you continue to do more of your service to the divine the further detailing of this happens in text 14 of the ninth chapter satatam kirtayanto mam yatantashche dridvrita 
नमस्त माम भक्तिया नित्य युक्ता उपासते सततम कीर्तयंतो माम इज ऑलवेज चैंटिंग सततम ऑलवेज कीर्तयंतो माम चैंटिंग माय ग्लोरीज एंड यतन तश्चा दृढ़व्रता विद अ डिटर्मिनेशन यतन तश्चा वर्किंग विद फर्म डिटर्मिनेशन नमस यंता चा ऑफरिंग देयर ओबेसेंसेस टू मी माम भक्तिया इन डिवोशनल एस्पेक्ट इन डिवोशनल मूड नित्य युक्ता ऑलवेज एंगेज्ड जॉइंट युक्त मींस टू लिंक टू जॉइन दे वर्शिप उपासते उपासना इज वर्शिप सो ऑलवेज चैंटिंग माय ग्लोरीज व्हाट आर दे डूइंग कीर्तन सो वन ऑफ द injunctions is kirtaniya sada hari always chant the names of the glories of the divine who is the ultimate liberator hmm? so there is um, chanting meditating and then vishnu smaranam hmm? remembering the divine with the determination offering the obeisances in devotional service perpetually constantly always engaged in the worship of the divine so worship is happening in many different ways there is worship by your action there is worship in many ways by uh, connecting with the divine whether it is in the mind or it is in the deity form the murti form or it is in the amurtina form the unmanifested form or it is in the universal nature form so one can look at the whole creation as being the body of the divine that is also explained or you can actually look at the deity form or a painting or a depiction of the divine and connect with that because the energies of the divine manifest when the form manifests it doesn't matter even a child can be making a drawing of krishna and if it is the intent that it is krishna and that is the idea then krishna's energies are emanating from there also the artists refer the sculptors refer to the shastras which give a depiction how to create a form of krishna which will eventually can be used in temple worship for example and there can be a neutral kind of a worship where there is no special procedure done and then there is the prana pratishta where is the actual invoking of the energies of krishna to manifest in expanded full form where then you have to connect with a whole service attitude so it gives you the idea of serving the divine and the devotees of the divine because uh, that is a very important part of doing this service to the divine so it is always advised that one should associate with the devotees or in your case we call them the healers and the healers must associate it is very important and we can get together and talk about krishna's pastimes and refer to that and enliven each other and so on praise the holy name chant the maha mantra is another way of serving uh, you chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so that is the sound form manifestation of the divine so by glorification of these and where will you glorify you will glorify amongst yourselves you will discuss you will talk or you will get together for congregational chanting if nothing else get together and chant the maha mantra that is also considered to be devotional activity of the highest order hmm? so shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam you hear shravan you chant kirtan and from that automatically comes the remembrance and from there krishna so this is a process 
It is not praising some ordinary person, it is the divine himself. And if you fast on Ikadashi, that is also service to the divine. So the fasts that are recommended, not these other fasts meant for material progress, which is going to get baffled. Mog, mog Asha, Mog Karma, Mog Jnana, all completely frustrating activities because you do not get any long term benefit of it and it is accompanied by a lot of anxiety and fear and so on. So you do the 11th day of the waxing and waning moon Ekadashi fasting, that is also service to the divine. That is part of the process. So all the great souls, the Mahatmas, they are observing these rules, guidances. As healers, it is up to us. We do not specify that you should do it. But we can follow the example of the great Mahatmas before us to the extent that we are able. So at the very minimum, you should be chanting Hare Krishna, Maha Mantra. You should be associating with other healers in Krishna consciousness, in God consciousness, doing some kirtan, bhajan, whatever it is, discussion, even talking about the divine, this is also kirtan. Like we are speaking, this is also kirtan because we are talking about the glories of the divine. And then your activities, when you are using the karma consequence healing energies of Reiki and the KQ force in your life, you are not going to be frustrated in your fruitive activities you will get the results which are without binding consequences. They are liberating. So you are covering so many things, whereas the other living entities are not, because they are frustrated. Moga asha, moga karma, and moga gyan. In your case, the frustration disappears. You get all these benefits. You get the positive aspect of karma without the binding debtor aspect of karma. So you don't become indebted. Hmm? Kirtaniya Sadahari. Remember that. So that is one way that you can do it. There is a further expansion of this which we will take up next time. So we will end here at text 14. In text 15 then Krishna and so on, Krishna is then going to explain uh, how these expansions of worship actually take place. So we will deal with that next time. Or maybe, um, well, I will do text 15 today because it is giving some conclusive knowledge about this worshipping aspect. So text 15 of chapter 9 is, Jnana yajjena chapi anye yajanto maam upasate ekatvena prithatvena Bahudaha Vishvato Mukham Jnana Yajjena by cultivation of knowledge by the sacrifice of cultivation of knowledge sacrifice ignorance and you are doing this Jnana Yajna Cha Api Anya others there are some who do that in the cultivation of knowledge others are worshipping the supreme as the ultimate Hadi Purusham and one without a second, one without an equal, without any duality and they are also worshipping as Vishwata Mukham, as the universal form. So we had mentioned that these are the various ways that one can connect with the divine. So one can worship himself actually as being one with the divine. So that is actually not a very good place to be. Because he is thinking that I am the divine and that is actually not so good. And then one is having some concocted form. Bhaktivedanta Swami uh, has given actually three references here that if we look at his commentary, he is saying that people have already been described as suffering, as the distressed, the financially destitute, the inquisitive, and those who are engaged in the cultivation of knowledge. So those are those four uh, that we talked about to say that there are the people, the Arth, Artharthi Jnani Jigyasu, 
who are approaching me. So all these people in these ashrams, in these divisions, of those who are the Artharthati, Gyani Jigyasu, the ones who are suffering in various ways, they are engaged in moving towards this knowledge. But those others, they are actually not in that zone. And those are those who consider themselves as one with the Supreme Lord, and those who concoct some form of the Supreme Lord and worship that. And the other is the one who accepts the universal form, the Vishwarup of the Divine. So the last worshipping worshipping of the Vishwarup is better than the others because the others are thinking that I can worship the demigods because the Divine has appeared in the demigods is as good. I can choose any demigod and he's the Divine for me. According to me, Lord Shiva is the ultimate, according to me uh, Lord Ganesh is the ultimate or uh, the planet, some Surya Dev is the ultimate, but that is not so. We have to see which zone are we falling in. So that is text 15. Jnana yajjena chapi anye yajanto maam upasati ikatvena prithaktvena Bahudha Vishwato Mukham Cultivation of knowledge, worshipping the Supreme as one without a second, and one who is diverse in many and in the universal form. These are the recommended ways of thinking. But those who are going to twist this, and they are thinking that the I am also divine, because the, I have the same qualities, or ultimately the soul the consciousness is eternal, so I am eternal. I am as good as the divine, so that is actually frustrated knowledge. And if we are worshipping the divine as the supreme without a second, that is very good. But if we are going to the demigods, now the divine has appeared in so many forms, I can choose any demigod that appeals to me or who fulfills my requisition slip I give to them, please give me this. Uh, for me, he is God. And worse than that is that if I go to some human being, some politician, some charitable person, you are my God. I go, you know, these people are my gods. Aap to mere liye bhagwan ho. Bilkul rubbish, nonsense. Uh, illusion, frustration, just lack of knowledge. And then the universal form, the whole universe is the form of the divine himself, the Vishwarup. That is in the right direction. So any of these are in the right direction and the opposite of those where one is thinking that I can become God, I am as good as God, worship me and you are worshipping God, wrong. So those are all illusory conditions. So we will pause here. We are pausing at text 15 of chapter 9 and next time we will start from 16. So if there are any questions, I'll take a few questions now. You've been listening to Bhagavad Gita for All, a lecture series by Nala Narula. Chapter 9, Most Confidential King of Knowledge.